So the reason I do this is to have air under here so the workbench doesn't cool it. And normally what I would do at that material thickness, I either chamfer them or space them out a little bit here. I'm going to give it like a eighth inch, eighth inch space out. I'm going to do a tack weld on the end first. take the settings down because I see the puddle sinking. Now when you look at this, that's the root of it and where you saw the puddle sinking that's the way you see the big worm on the back side here. So this all needs to be like back gouged and ground in order to weld the back side properly because you have like two or three oxide layers now from the weld and from the material meeting each other there. So this, just welding over it, is an absolute no-go because that creates a bad weld. But if I do it hard enough, maybe it's gonna hot enough, maybe it's gonna work, right? So here is where you see why it doesn't work. You see the crack coming down the center and you see the crack coming this way. So that's why it's an absolute no-no. You back gouge it, you let it cool back down below 400 degrees, maybe below 250 and then you weld the back side with the appropriate settings rather than trying to be really hot, burn it in and burn through the oxide layer because that will essentially do nothing for you. So now, that's why you don't do this. It's doing absolutely nothing for you. If this was your boat, you find yourself on the bottom of the lake. I mean, it didn't even like pop. I don't even have any real leverage here. A little six or eight inch wrench and a, and a welding pliers. And then here on the bottom, you see the incomplete fusion of the, of the oxides in there. That's why you need to back gouge. trigger happy right here and burn a nice hole in it which then you heard the frequency drop and I filled that hole in there's the hole I burned through but other than that the top looks good here starts part of my start of my run-in on the tack so this looks like an appropriate weld on the top the back side you see it came through here where I put the hole in and then you have the oxides on the bottom. So we're going to back gouge this now and clean this up and then we're going to weld the back side. So here you see the groove that we just back gouged. Everything in there is perfectly clean. There's no oxides, no black soot, nothing in there. 
I want to say we went about halfway. You may have to go anywhere from quarter of the way to three quarters of the way, depending on depending on how how deep your first weld penetrated. You want to make sure there's no pinholes, nothing black, no soot, nothing, no oxides in there anymore. And now you want to weld the back side of this. If you were going to cut this open, polish it, etch it, and look at the nugget, you would see a full 100% penetration weld. Like, this is something you would want on your boat.